from Umbrella Boy to Fish Mooney to the head of Gotham's Underworld to now the leader of a freak army for se three seasons on Gotham. We have known him as Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin, Robin Lord Taylor. Thanks hey, so much for joining me, man. It's great to be here, man. Good it to is see you. Good to see you, yes. as always. You know, yeah, for three seasons we've been watching this adventure of, of Oswald. What are you proud about contributing to Penguin? Uh, I, it's, it's, you're, you said it. I mean, it's, it's a rarefied air that I'm breathing right mm -hmm. now in the sense that, like, I follow the footsteps of two just, you know, classic American actors, you know. Uh, and, yeah, I see, you know, it's I mean, metaphorically big shoes to fill. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, I would say what I'm proud of is, it says no bearing on the previous incarnations, but in some ways this is, the closest to the closest to human as the penguin has gotten thus far, at least on screen, and uh, and I'm just happy to be a part of that. I think the character needed that. I think it was time to tell that story and to show, you know, that yeah, that that, that this villain is just as important in the in the evolution of Bruce Wayne to Batman, you know, as any of the others. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to like be part of that story, you know. How do we know when Oswald is about to have a classic freak out? Because we, he has a range of emotions and, and you display them all on camera, but when he snaps and goes into super violent mode, what's the key to, to knowing it's on the way? I think, well, I think ultimately the key is that he, whether the audience knows it or not, in that moment, he has achieved some sort of power or stability. Like, he's a very calculated person, and, like, you know, he is, you know, his emotions do get the better of him. But at the same time, like, he releases them when it's safe for him. You know, this is someone who grew up, you know, in very dangerous circumstances, you know, constantly, constantly being pursued by by bullies and, and, you know, adversaries his entire life. And so to, you know, let loose and snap, he knows, he has it within himself to know that that can only happen when he has a leg to stand on, you know. And so, so I, think, uh, I think that's one of the keys is that, you know, there's something about those situations where, you know, he feels secure enough to allow the monster to come out without, you know, feeling like it's going to jeopardize his life. Is he now self-aware? Has he embraced his, his freakness? Is he ready to let the freak flag fly? Or what's, what's going on mentally with Oswald now that he's pursuing others like him? Well, I would say, what I love about this story is that when we started the season, Oswald is running for mayor on a platform to, quote, get rid of the monsters and make Gotham safe again. And, you know, he, he aligns himself with the Riddler, and we all know how that turned out. And, you know, now he's on the, he's, he's thrown all of that away, or all of that has been thrown away, and now he's... Again, he, he is now the monster. He is now like, you know, go, he is now what he was campaigning against. And so what he's doing, you're right, he is embracing that freak, that freak flag. He's going for those monsters, those people that were cast out of society because of the things that Oswald was saying. They are now his only allies. And so it's a very, you know, full circle learning moment for him and also, you know, a, a glimpse into how manipulative Os Oswald is at his core, you know, to, to speak so emphatically about how, you know, monsters are going to ruin the world and, you know, everyone who's different, get rid of them, you know, it's danger, you know, these are themes that we see in, in, in reality, unfortunately, and Oswald really runs with it, but then when it's all taken away from him, those are the only people that he can rely upon. So it's, yeah, it's a big lesson for him.